In this podcast, I'm going to talk about some of the rituals that people with OCD may have. If like me or someone that struggles with their mental health, yes, I know it's a pain in the ass, but you are not alone, as you'll see from this podcast. Hello, my name's James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. I set up this channel in 2022 because I really want to support parents, specifically dads, and I suppose specifically dads like myself who often struggle with mental health. If that sounds like something you'd like to support, please follow my podcast. And if having listened to a podcast, you really want to support me, leaving a review makes a massive difference. As part of my research, I've got a lot of this information from Mind. For more information, go to www.mind.org.uk. So what are intrusive thoughts? An intrusive thought is basically an unwanted thought that just pops into your head. It can be experienced as a thought or a feeling or a sensation or a memory or an urge or some sort of mental picture. It can often be triggered by something or can also just come into your mind for absolutely no obvious reason. Intrusive thoughts are actually very common. And according to the MIND website, it's estimated that we have thousands of thoughts each day because we have so many different thoughts. Some of them will be utterly random, utterly meaningless, and also potentially quite confusing. Sometimes those intrusive thoughts can feel scary or shameful or offensive. They might go completely against our values or beliefs. For example, you might have a thought about hurting someone. This could feel shocking and disturbing to you. From reading this research, what I think is really important and I really agree with is to remember that we can't control or get rid of our intrusive thoughts. And just because a thought comes into your mind, it doesn't mean that you agree with it or that it's true. And for anyone out there who may be listening and this might be resonating, it's really important, and this is as much a memo to myself as to anyone listening, obsessions are not a reflection of your personality. People with OCD are very, very unlikely to act on their thoughts. Your thoughts are not who you are. So in regard to the O of OCD, O stands for obsessions. And often people with OCD have obsessions when the intrusive thoughts they have just become very hard to manage. You might feel that you can't share these worries with other people because they might be shocked or distressed or, or wonder what sort of person can have these horrible thoughts. Whenever I've actually had the courage to share my thoughts and fears quite often online in a dad's Facebook group, it's never met with anything other than just support and compassion. And it always helps, even if the thing I'm sharing isn't a something that someone else has to deal with themselves. Everyone has mental health and everyone will struggle with their mental health at some point in their life. That's pretty much a fact. Life is difficult and life's going to throw you curveballs. So what are compulsions? Compulsions are repetitive things that People with OCD often feel they have to do to reduce the stress or uncertainty caused by the obsessions. People often feel like they have to do something until your distress or doubt goes away and things feel okay again. Like me, you might know that actually it doesn't make any sense to carry out a compulsion of checking a door is locked 50 times, but you still feel unable to resist doing it. Doing the compulsion does actually make you feel better initially. But the problem is the more you do it, the harder it is to avoid doing that compulsion in the future. And it's just adding work to your life. My leaving the house, but only after doing a number of rituals of checking all the doors, checking all the lights, putting my hand under taps, check they're off, saying lights are off, etc. It's very time consuming and very tiring. And you can't live your life like that. Certainly if you're a parent, life is stressful enough. You have a finite amount of energy. Having to add that extra workload of compulsions and rituals just isn't helpful and it's eating away at the finite amount of energy you have in a day. So what can compulsions be? Well, compulsions can be things that you do physically. They might be things you do in your head, such as rumination. When compulsions are internal and don't involve physically doing something, some people refer to this as pure O, which is the diagnosis I was told I had following doing a CBT course in 2010 with the NHS. This can involve a number, such as feeling like you have to do a compulsion a certain number of times without interruption. If you're interrupted, maybe you have to do that again. It can also involve someone else, like asking others for reassurance. And that's when things get problematic. My wife has her own workload, her own finite amount of energy. If she's got to manage me, asking her questions she can't possibly answer, that's going to take its toll on her mental health. 
So as difficult as it is, it's really important for me to try and find coping strategies so that actually I can do this myself. I can find solutions to the problems myself. So what sort of things can be rituals? For example, washing your hands or your body or things around you a lot. I don't have this so much. Everyone's mental health is utterly unique. And because of that, everyone's mental health problems will be utterly unique. Rituals can be touching things in a particular way or at a certain time. It can be arranging objects in your house in a particular way. It can be saying things again and again a certain number of times. I'm lucky enough, I feel, to not have this to this extreme. But I certainly know that there are things I could do better to make my life easier. For example, the idea of just leaving the house without checking the doors are locked is completely unrealistic to me. My OCD manifests itself more in checking. So if I leave the house, checking doors and windows are locked. Or ruminating of maybe a, a trip in the car to think, did I cause any accidents? Seeking reassurance from my partner. Checking my phone or my computer to see if I've accidentally sent something offensive or embarrassing. My rituals whenever I'm feeling anxious is constant rumination. So thinking about the same thing again and again, trying to solve or fix my intrusive thoughts by thinking about what they mean, doing extensive research on the internet about my obsessions. Driving has always seemed to be a major trigger for my mental health. Did I go through an orange light instead of a green light? And what does that mean? Did I accidentally clip a curb? And did that indirectly cause an accident? Was there anywhere near the crossing when I went past the crossing? And the thing I suppose I want to do with this podcast is basically create a place where people who might have similar worries or anxieties or mental health issues can come and just listen. Because the, I get so much comfort from comments of people, often complete strangers online, who don't have the same mental health problems that I do, but have mental health problems and get it and get how difficult it is, and get how debilitating it is, and get how much extra work it's adding to your life. And some complete stranger saying, mate, that sounds tough, or telling me about their problem, it doesn't erase my problem, but it makes me feel less crazy. It makes me realise I'm just a human being doing my best. And that's the only silver lining. If there is a silver lining to have a mental illness, it makes you feel human, and it makes you realise that we are all complex, and we all have problems, and we're all going to continue to have problems. And I suppose to an extent, that's why I wanted to set up a podcast and a YouTube channel about mental health, because I thought, well, you've got this thing. And for whatever reasons, from all your trying, through medication, through all the techniques you've been advised, which can make it easier, but don't seem to be able to erase it completely. So if you've got this situation, you've got this thing in your head, maybe learn about it and maybe use it to help others. Because then I feel like actually there's a point to it. If someone else out there who's ruminating about an intrusive thought or having a really tough time and that's impacting their relationships or their life listens to one of my podcasts and thinks, oh, okay, yeah, that's similar to something I sometimes, yeah, that, mm, yeah, that could be me. And that gives them an element of calm. That makes their day 10% easier. Well, then I feel like there's a point to doing this. And what I'm really hoping is that other people out there listening who have mental health issues and have overcome things or have made it slightly easier than it used to be might feel compelled and inspired to come on maybe don't use the word compelled might be inspired to come on and, and, and talk about it because that's how we learn as human beings we learn through stories and if you hear another person in my case another the 40 year old dad who's overcome a, a mental health issue or has made life slightly easier by working hard at something by confronting something that's only going to inspire me to do the same. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you have a specific question about OCD or mental health that you'd like me to try and do my best to answer, please let me know. You can contact me at www.dadmindmatters.com. And if you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please also contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there to the people who really need it. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon, and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website www.dadmindmatters.com.